Greetings mathematicians, welcome to the Insight My Life channel. Today we're going to be talking about using the greatest common factor. So let's begin. First off, what is the greatest common factor? Well, the question that we have to ask is, what do all the terms share? So take the following terms, 4 and 16. What numbers do these terms share? So if we think what numbers will divide into both of these with no remainder? So a 1, for instance, will evenly go into 4 and 16, as will 2 and 4. So between 1, 2, and 4, the greatest of these is 4. And so your greatest common factor is therefore a 4. So the alternate way to find the greatest common factor is through a tree and this is the most popular way in that is taught now in most colleges and high schools now and the technique for that is to take a number and to break it down into its prime factorization so let's take our previous numbers so we have 4 and 16 and let's break these down into our prime factorization so 4 is the product of 2 and 2 and 16 is the product of 2, 2, 2, and 2. So what you do is you look for the greatest number of matching groups here. So for the 4, you see that we have a 2 and a 2. And 16 also has a 2 and a 2. So therefore, your GCF is 2 times 2, which is going to be 4. So you see how that works. There's two different ways of finding the GCF. Most people do the first way where they just look at the numbers and they say, okay, well, this number is the largest number that goes into both of those numbers. And then the alternate way is to break it up using a tree. And both, both ways are fine. It's all up to your preference. You know, I honestly like the, doing it through the tree. Oh, you know, it just occurred to me. I haven't even shown you a tree. Let me show you what I mean by a tree, okay? So let's, look, let's review what that means. So I'm going to break the following number into its prime factorization. So 128. So the first step is let's think of what number times another number will make up 128. So I started out and said 2 times 64 makes 128. And then 64 is the product of 8 and 8. And then that 8 is the product of 2 and 4. And that 8 is the product of 2 and 4. And then 4 is the product of 2 and 2 and the same thing over there. So if we take the very ends of our branches, which are all the twos, we find that 128 is basically the same thing as 2 to the seventh power, if you count up all the yellow circles there. So that's how you break a number up into its prime factorization. So let's take this approach and let's apply this to variables now. Okay, so let's say that we have x squared y and x to the fourth y to the third. So we have something really weird and complicated like that. Well, let's break that those two variables into their prime factorization. So the prime factorization of x squared y is x, x, y. And the prime factorization of x, 4, y, 3 is x, 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 y, y, y. Now let's try and find the greatest amount of matches that we can find. So we know that they share uh, two x's and they share a y. So that means that our GCF then is x, x, y. So hence it's x squared y. Now let's try and, uh, try and bring it all together and apply what we've learned to polynomial equations. So let's say we have 9xy squared and 36x squared y. So let's break things down into their prime factorization. So 9xy squared is 33xyy, and 36 is 2233xxy. And you can break all the numbers and variables down using a factor tree. And that's where I got this. I just break it down into its prime factorization. And then at this point, let's see what they have in common. So take a look. What do you think? I'm thinking they have a 3, they have an x, and a y. So 
Oh, and another 3. Sorry. So they have a 3, 3, x, y. And that gives us our GCF, which is 9, x, y. All right, so now let's try and really apply this to the types of questions that you'll see on homework and tests and quizzes. So let's say they give you the following. 4a cubed b squared minus 2a squared b cubed plus 8ab. And they ask you to fa fully factor this. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take each term and we're going to break it up into its prime factorization. So the first term, you see I wrote it as 2 times 2 and then times AAABB and then 2AABBB and then 2222AB. So now, take a look at this. What do you think is the, the terms that they all share? So they definitely share a 2. Not more than one two, because that middle term only has a single two. That means we can only pick one two. And then they also share an A, and then they also share a B. So it looks like our GCF then is two AB. So in order to fully factor this, since it's in an equation form now, is we're gonna take the two AB out of each collection of terms okay so where I have the yellow boxes just imagine that you got rid of what's in the yellow boxes so the 2ab is going to go outside of parentheses and so everything that's not in those yellow boxes is going to be left over in its own set of print in its inside the parentheses I should say so take a look we have 2ab on the outside and on the inside we have the leftover so starting from the left you see how we have two and then ignoring the yellow boxes, it's 2AAB. So AA is A squared, right? So 2A squared B is the first term inside the parentheses. And then look at the next one, ABB, which is AB squared. So you see how that works? Using the prime factorization kind of makes it easier to, to see what goes inside. Because sometimes that, that confuses people too, is when you pull out the greatest common factor, you know, what do you leave inside the parentheses? So this really helps make it very clear what you are supposed to leave inside. So congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. I'm glad that you stuck it out this far. Um, I'm gonna be uploading pretty soon part three to factoring. So we've covered basically in the first video for the essentials of factoring, we covered all the, the basic techniques of factoring. And then now in this one, we kind of took a step back and we looked more closely at how to find the greatest common factor. And then coming up, I'm going to go over some special rules like the sum of uh, cubes, the difference of cubes, difference of squares, all that stuff that you need to know. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave some feedback, and hey, if you got a suggestion on the next one, feel free and drop a comment or leave a message in my inbox. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time.